Hello again, I am Blanty. Before we get started, no, not a word from our sponsor. Not not Raid Shadow Legends. I just want to beg you for a second to interact with the video. Give me a thumb. The algorithm doesn't actually care which way you go. Thumb up, thumb down. It doesn't care. Interaction is interaction as far as YouTube is concerned. Did you know that? Your thumbs don't matter, ever. Hitting the thumb is the only thing that matters. I would prefer the thumb up, just because it feels spiritually better. Know what I mean? Better yet, comment. Better yet, subscribe. Better yet, actually hit the bell when you subscribe so you get a fair enough chance to maybe get notified of my videos. Because YouTube, when you hit the subscribe button, it goes, well, I'll sometimes tell you about the things you've chosen to be told about, but <laughs> who knows? Because, you know, that's life as a YouTube creator these days. Thanks, YouTube. It, it feels great. So, let's talk about the... Th I'm trying not to sidetrack as much as I usually do, and as my predilection with these non-scripted videos. I will try very hard not to sidetrack and just stick to the point of the video, because that's where you clicked here. You wanted a question answered, and that question is, do you need a new motherboard for the new graphics cards? And that's because we've had confirmed now. When we, we knew this was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen, but now we've had it officially confirmed. It's in, in, in writing and everything that the new RTX 3000 series cards are using PCIe Generation 4 which has only been around for a fistful of months, basically, since the latest generation of uh, AMD CPUs launched, so launched with motherboards, which support this. And of course, PCIe Generation 4 is faster than PCIe Generation 3, which chances are is what you've got in your machine right now, again, unless you've updated very, very recently. And for you non-technically inclined, the PCIe I'm talking about, that's the slot that your graphics card goes into. It's also where things like uh, capture cards go into and, and sound cards, if you've got an extra sound card, things like that. You know, the, the slotty bits on your motherboard. I like a slotty motherboard. And don't get me wrong. Motherboard with a single slot, the ITX. They're not so, so, sidetracking. Promised I wouldn't do that. I wanted to make a joke about slot and slot sounding similar, that's all. So let's roll back a few generations to get some context for this discussion. When the GTX 10 series launched, there was uh, questions about whether or not the GTX 1080 would saturate uh, PCI generation 2 uh, or even an 8 times PCI Generation 3 slot. Turns out, no, it wasn't a problem. So you could put it in basically whatever slot you could fit it in. Although most people put in the top slot in the motherboard, which is obviously usually the fastest one. Almost always. Almost always. In the context of PCI Generation 3, that was almost always a 16 times slot. And the GTX 1080 couldn't even come close to saturating an 8 times connection. So that was a lot of panic having nothing. Then the 20 series came out, the RTX 20 series, and the question came up again. And it was a bit more important this time because by this time, we started to see very commonly NVMe M.2 drives, which on a lot of motherboards share their PCIe LAN. Because a reminder, if you didn't know this, the NVMe type of uh, M.2 drive actually use PCIe LANs directly, just like your graphics card and anything else does. Just goes into a different slot, that's all. Um, and some motherboards share PCIe bandwidth between slots and sometimes between slots and the M.2 uh, thing as well. So if you had a very high-end graphics card and you had a very high-end M.2 drive, there was thoughts, well, if they're competing for bandwidth, is that going to be a problem? Turns out, no. Well, it wasn't really a problem. Outside of very extra edge case, you didn't have to worry about it. But the RTX 2080 Ti could actually fully saturate and, in fact, exceed uh, the ability of a PCIe Generation 3 8 times slot. This wasn't an issue for anyone out there in any practical terms because, well, if you had one of these cards, chances are you're going into a 16 top slot anyway uh, because that's usually just the default top slot. And even if you didn't know the difference, you put it in the top slot because that's where you've seen other people put it. That's a 16 time slot, so there was no problems there. There were a couple of edge case situations where if you had two graphics cards and perhaps two uh, NVMe drives and things like that, and your motherboard just happened to share some of those lanes in a particular way that might have been a bottleneck under certain circumstances on a certain day of the week when the wind was blowing from the south. But by and large, nobody had an issue with it. Nobody even needed to think about it. We did learn yesterday, though, that the 3080 is about twice as fast as a 2080. Not the 2080 Ti I was just talking about. The 2080 Ti was the one that could saturate an eight-time slot. But the 2080 isn't that much slower than the TI. So if we have a graphics card that's twice as fast as a graphics card that could almost saturate an eight times slot, we might be looking at a graphics card that can almost possibly exceed uh, the capabilities of a 16 times PCIe generation three slot on your motherboard. And that's where the question comes up. Do I need a new motherboard? The short answer is no. Your PCIe generation four slot is backwards compatible, or card, I should say, is backwards compatible for the Generation 3 slots. So if you buy a 3080 and your motherboard is, you know, a year old, 
uh, or older, it'll go in fine, it'll work fine, there's no trick to it, it'll just plug in, drivers, install, work, game, fun, happy times, joy. Zero issues there. It will work fine. The only issue is if it is just fast enough to be able to saturate that 16 times slot, you might run into problems sometimes. And again, this is an edge case thing. It'll only happen under certain circumstances. If you're gaming at 4K and you're looking at 60 frames a second, uh, you know, in that sort of glorious ideal situation of PC gaming master race uh, glory, uh, you probably won't hit that bottleneck. Chances are you won't. If, however, you're running at lower resolutions at very, very high frame rates, that's where you might hit it. And I know it sounds backwards. You're thinking, well, 4K? Surely that will be the issue. All those 4K textures going back and forth? No, not really an issue. Most of those textures live on the memory on the graphics card and just pulls in the new ones when it needs it. Not really a bandwidth saturation kind of issue. The bandwidth saturation issue is those very, very high frame rates. And especially with these new screens they've just started talking about with, what is it, 360 uh, hertz? Things like that. So yeah, if you're, I mean, even if you're not running a high refresh monitor, if you're just running your game at very, very high frame rates, so you have extremely high responsiveness for your esports shooters and things like that, for example, that's a lot of bandwidth being used up for all those frames going back and forth and all that sort of information from the CPU to the GPU to make sure, you know, whatever physics stuff it's doing on the GPU, uh, on the CPU lines up with what the GPU is spitting out and things like that. That's where the bandwidth issue lies in those very, very high frame rates. And you usually only see those when you're running at relatively low resolution. So 1080p, maybe even 1440p, depending on what game you're doing and how you're doing it, things like that. So that's where your edge case might be in those, you know, several hundreds of, of frames per second. Uh, and even then, it's going to depend on the game and how it's working and how much it, is, it needs the CPU to do what it needs to do. So the long answer is yes, it might actually matter. But again, short answer is no, you'll be fine. If you have been fence sitting, uh, wondering if it's time to pull the trigger on an upgrade for your motherboard and CPU and the, you know, or the entire machine, as it were, uh, yeah, now might be an appropriate time to do that because... PCA 4.0 is going to be more and more relevant as we move forward because we're going to have faster and faster drives that can take advantage of that, faster and faster GPUs that can take advantage of that. So hopefully that's made it clear for you. I've, I've tried to keep the techno babble as long as possible. Uh, so if you, if you don't really understand what these technologies are or anything like that, hopefully I've made it clear enough so you can understand what's going on uh, and allayed some of your fears and sort of made you feel confident in whether or not you can actually pull the trigger on buying one of these graphics cards. Um, Certainly, if you're looking at the 3090, the even, even, even more powerful sort of uh, one than the flagship, chances are, if, you, if you're after one of those, you're probably fairly upgraded already, aren't you? You're one of those people who upgrades your PC motherboard every goddamn year or something like that. And if you're slushing that much cash around on a, on, a, on a graphics card, you know why you need it. And you probably know where, you, where your bottlenecks are. So we don't you really need to talk about that much. But, you know. The enthusiast PC gamer comes in two forms. The ones who understand all the technobabble and the ones who just want to play games and have them run. I'm not sure what that noise was. I don't know what I was trying to get to, but you know what I mean. Any one of a gajillion influencer streamers out there who, I've seen them talk about PC hardware. They've got no clue. They might know how to play a game well. They've got no clue when it comes to hardware. It's kind of embarrassing sometimes. I'm not going to throw any shade though. I'm not that kind of guy. But yeah, I, I've been thinking about this myself. By the way, if you've just come to answer the question, the question's answered, you can leave the video now. If, you, if you're here just for a more uh, re relatable kind of stuff, then, then stick around for the rest of it because I'm talking about what I'm going to do next. Uh, and I have, in fact, been looking at upgrading to PCA4 because both machines I use at the moment, my main rig and the secondary rig I use to run games on when I'm streaming in particular or recording uh, sometimes, um, they're both PCA Generation 3 units at the moment. Although the secondary rig is running a CPU the 3900X, that is capable of running in a motherboard with PCA 4.0. Uh, it's just that that machine started out as a uh, 2700 and it got upgraded to 3900X because I had one left over from the review that I wasn't actually using any active machines anymore. I thought, well, bugger it. That's so much more powerful. I'll swap it in because the motherboard barely uh, has a BIOS upgrade to enable it to use that. I do have a motherboard with a PCA 4.0 uh, ability in it. I just don't currently have another CPU capable of driving that. But I am going to need to get one soon for the purposes of testing, because obviously, hopefully, at least, uh, I will be getting at least a sample or two at some point. I don't know whether I'm going to have one in time for launch or, whether, or, or sometime afterwards, uh, but at some point, hopefully, I'll get a sample of one of these things. I would like to know that I'm running it without, without the outside chance of running into the bottleneck we were talking about before. So I'm going to need at least a test rig 
with the PDCI 4.0 on it. My main rig uh, is a few years old now. It's running a first generation Threadripper uh, CPU, which is still monstrously powerful and glorious, even though the 3900X in the secondary machine is actually slightly more powerful under some certain workloads as well. So my secondary rig, the CPU is more powerful than my main rig, but the GPU on that rig is more powerful than that rig. So weird setup. But yeah, the, the, the Threadripper 1950X I've got in the main rig is, you know, three generations deep by now, and we're soon to hear about the next generation of Ryzen CPUs. I don't know whether I'll go again for a Threadripper. I don't really need it. The only reason I have it there is because I had the opportunity to do a build with that. And I thought, well, yeah, Threadripper, sign me up. So uh, we'll obviously get the consumer level stuff announced first, and then later the next generation Threadripper will follow that. Considering that the 3900 already outperforms in a lot of workloads, the 1950X I've got there, I probably, you know, to, to exceed what's already in that machine, I won't need to wait for the Threadrippers. I can go for just for the top tier of the consumer line and still get a uh, significant boost in that machine and get the PCA 4.0 that comes with it and whatever whatever else comes along with it as well. Uh, you know, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 or something like that uh, built onto it as well because I currently have an add-in card for that purpose. So, yeah, I am you know, myself looking at upgrading at least one of my machines, if not just building a test rig with PCI 4 in it, so I can, you know, test these new cards and things like that without the possibility of, of hitting that bottleneck. I have actually had to say no to a M.2 drive, an NVMe M.2 drive that relied on, you know, uh, PCI generation 4 speeds to run to its full capacity. I had to say no to that review. It's like the, the world's fastest M.2 drive. I said, actually, I can't test it properly, so there's no point sending it to me because it would have been embarrassing to run a review of this thing and not be able to max it out and use it like it's supposed to be used. And that, you know, I didn't want to do that to the people who were sending it to me, to the PR people who were going to send that to me. They would have had to explain it to the brand that then, you know, there was a useless review out there. Anyway, are you going to upgrade soon? Have you upgraded already? You're running PCI 4.0? Let me know in the down below. And as always, thank you to the glorious patrons scrolling up above there. As I said in the beginning of the video, uh, you really do make a huge difference. We actually have a few new patrons uh, first first new ones that come along since I launched the Patreon, actually. It's been fairly steady for the first few months of that. And we've got a couple new ones, so thank you for that. Uh, a couple of people also upgraded their Patreon as well. Thank you for that as well. Very meaningful and lovely of you. Uh, thanks for watching, I'm Blunty. I'll catch you next time.